Hello and welcome to MicroCap Tutorials. Today we're going to be doing the operational amplifier, or specifically the non-inverting type of that. So we're going to put down a operational amplifier of an LF147 variety. You can choose any model you wish for this one. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as these bipolar supplies are connected. Um, MicroCap will add VC and VE, and you can check that in the power supplies tab that manifests as soon as you put down the part. You can change these values if you like, but 15 volts is enough for what we're doing. So now we're going to do the resistances. So the feedback resistance is important. We're going to call that RF. And the resistance value we're going to set to 2K. OK, now the input resistance. We're going to set that to 1K, and we're going to, we're going to call it RI. And you connect, you connect this by taking the median point between these two resistances and putting it at the inverting terminal. Next, you put the ground, and then you connect to the output. We're going to label this output, out, and then we're going to have our in. And this is really all that you need to do now to be able to create a non-inverting amplifier. You have all the pieces that you need together. And the only thing left to do is to decide what kind of signal you want to put into the, op to in into the operational amplifier. So today we're going to choose a sine source, and we're going to set this uh, to 100 millivolts, and it's going to be at 440 hertz. 440 hertz is significant because it's an A4. A4 is where most of music is composed from, and everything from that is based on some type of integer multiple or integer uh, division of some harmonic from that, um, some that from that frequency or some um, uh, difference from that frequency. And so here we have the input, and can, we can expect that uh, the way that the way that these non-inverting amplifiers work is according to this equation. So we take RF, which is the feedback resistance, and divide it by the input resistance, and then add one to it, and then that's our coefficient of, of amplification. That's our, our gain, essentially. So we can expect that two divided by one is gonna be two, and then plus one is gonna be three. So the output is supposed to be three times as large as the input. So this was 100 millivolts, we can expect that this is going to be 300 millivolts. Uh, but the frequency content is going to be retained, so it's going to still be at 440 hertz. So there you go, up to 300 millivolts. <coughs> so that's all great, but um, sometimes what's useful when in your electronic study uh, is to use different domains of knowledge. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to listen to it. We're going to listen to the difference in, in, how, in these notes and how they might sound. So on the fifth string of a normal guitar that's, that's tuned um, uh, with even temperament, um, the first string is, is actually furthest away from the player. Uh, and you go to the fifth fret, you reach with your pinky, and that is A4. So that is essentially the sinusoid that I am putting into the amplifier when I do that. Now it's integer division, uh, we're just one step down, the A3, uh, which is 220 is on the third string on the second fret. And then on the fifth string, this one is already tuned to A, A2, and so it's at 110 hertz. So we have 110 hertz, 220 hertz, and 440 for A4. So that all sounds really nice, um, but now we're gonna, this is just the, the natural uh, dynamics of the instrument. If I wanna increase uh, the volume, or if I wanna increase the gain, I'm essentially now starting to use that amplifier. So now I'm gonna play that A4 note. So that's 440 hertz, 220 hertz. connect some of these notes together, um, or not, not those notes, but if you connect notes that are adjacent to each other with an interval uh, that is uh, pretty even and nice, you can create some chords. So this would be an A major. Sounds pretty nice. So those are some fun examples. In most cases, um, for students who are learning EMC or electromagnetic compatibility, um, I really recommend that you spend actually time in music, because music uh, is a lot of what to do with waves and uh, how to make those useful and um, uh, to, to understand the constructive and de uh, destructive nature of waves. And so studying music is desirable if you ever end up in an EMC um, career or want to go in that career uh, path. It's, it's very good, very lucrative, and, and it's very stable. So 
uh, if you can learn music, uh, your EMC knowledge will also improve because there's a direct analogy between them. So thanks for tuning in today.